What's a better game for the Nintendo Switch? Super Mario Odyssey or Zelda Breath of the Wild? Now both of these games are fantastic, more than fantastic, they're phenomenal games. But 2017 is drawing to a close next month and that means that it's time to pick our game of the year. So which one of these games is more deserving of that title? I know it's not comparing apples to apples, it's not even apples to oranges, it's like apples to like a zucchini. But let's figure out which one is better on today's video. Welcome to Switch Sunday, where it's Sunday and we decided to talk about the Nintendo Switch. It's a super spectacular time, these Switch Sundays. That's an alliteration, that's a literary term. And if that's cool to you, why not subscribe? Now today we're comparing Zelda, Breath of the Wild to Super Mario Odyssey. Which game is better? A Switch exclusive Odyssey or a disclaimer here, Breath of the Wild, which is on Wii U and Switch. And that's why I'm not holding up my copy of Breath of the Wild, because it is a Wii U copy, seeing as it's not exactly exclusive, I guess, point in Odyssey's favor right there. So on today's video, we're comparing five, well, four now, aspects of Mario Odyssey and Zelda Breath of the Wild to decide which is ultimately the better game, which is more worth your money, and which, if you're a Nintendo fanboy, should be your game of the year. Because, of course, since I have a beard and I'm talking on the internet, my opinion is law. So come on, let's get into it. So first things first, it's the most valuable part of any game, that's the gameplay. And both these games play very differently. They're extremely different. They're two completely different genres of games. Mario Odyssey is a platformer. It's a 3D platform and you're going around the world into all these different kingdoms, like my favorites being the Sand Kingdom, the Metro Kingdom, that Endgame Kingdom. Those of you who played the game, you know what I'm talking about. Mario I don't think has ever been so agile and I think what really helps us is his buddy Cappy. Cappy lets you take control of certain enemies and control certain parts of the terrain. So this is a Mario game where at some point you're shooting things down as a tank or where you're ramming through rocks as a T-Rex. You're collecting power moons in each kingdom and each kingdom isn't comprised of stages. No, no, you're literally exploring these. In many ways it feels more like a Banjo-Kazooie game than a Super Mario game and I'm okay with that. Breath of the Wild, on the other hand, well, it's not your traditional style Zelda game. You wake up after a hundred years after some great calamity caused by, fittingly enough, Calamity Ganon, and now you have to set off on an adventure as Zelda, because that's the green guy. Breath of the Wild is this huge, massive world. I think, I heard something like it's, what, ten times the size of the world in Skyrim? It's massive. There's a lot that goes into gameplay here as well. I mean, you have these certain abilities, like, you know, you can pick up certain stones, or uh, you can freeze water or whatnot. Uh, it makes comms and it's really cool but my only problem with it is why well, I notice is I take a week or a few days off from the game I feel like you, you have to get reacclimated. you have to relearn the controls of it you know it's not as pick up and play as Mario is there's a bit more learning that goes into it but then again with that said, I don't think it takes too long to get reacclimated. The other thing too is it's so open and it, there's so much to do that I found myself getting lost a lot. And granted, getting lost would usually result me in me doing something fun, you know, like, oh, I meant to go this way, but instead I found a horse or whatever. Because of the pick up and play nature of Mario Odyssey, because of the fact that uh, it, it is a platformer and because it's a bit easy to remember where, where you are, and as someone who plays a Switch portably a lot, I feel like I'm gonna give the point here into Mario Odyssey's favor. Now the second, well, I guess technically third thing we're talking about here is the presentation. Super Mario Odyssey is so bright and colorful and it just pops, it just absolutely pops out at you. No matter where you are, it's so vibrant and colorful and the soundtrack is fantastic as well, especially uh, that, that trailer song, Jump Up Superstar, I think you, you hear it in New Donk City as well, spoiler alert, ah, you know it's a spoiler from the trailer, but you know what? It's such a good soundtrack, it's so great. All these characters just really come to life. But do you know what else comes to life? The world in Breath of the Wild. At the very beginning of the game, like five minutes in, right after you get out of that beginning cave area and you just look out over the world, the first time I saw that, I just kind of put down the gamepad for a sec because, you know, Wii U, and I just kind of looked out in awe. I was like, holy crap. And yes, in the opening parts of the game, there are some frame rate issues. 
but I don't care. It's also stunning and it is kind of vibrant in a way. What's weird about Breath of the Wild is that while it's certainly more realistic looking than, than Odyssey or most of the, the other Zelda games, it is a little cartoony in its way. You know, it, it doesn't try to be ultra realistic. It knows it's a fantasy game and I, I think it embraces that. While I do feel like not all the characters really pop out as much as they do in Mario Odyssey, I feel like the world itself pops out more. So with that, I think as far as presentation goes, while I think Mario Odyssey has a better soundtrack, because let's be honest, some of Breath of the Wild is pretty much just ambient noise most of the time, I feel like graphically speaking, and uh, as far as design on the whole goes, I will award the point to Breath of the Wild. Point four is something I have touched on before, and I've mentioned it here before, but I feel like it's reiteration, and that's replay value. Both of these games I feel like are good value for money as far as time spent. I mean, we aren't talking like a Sonic Forces situation, which man, I like that game, but where you're paying for a game and then you're getting like four to five hours of gameplay. No, there's a lot to do here. Mario Odyssey has all the power moons to, to get and then all the different coins, like the purple coins. Once you beat the game, there's still probably another five, six hours. I can't even fathom how long it takes to 100%. Apparently though, someone has done a 100% speed run. That took 17 hours. However, let's be honest here. I've mentioned before, Breath of the Wild is a game that I feel like I could literally play infinitely. I will always find something new. A new shrine, a new Korok scene, something new in Breath of the Wild. And while I feel like Mario Odyssey lends itself better as a portable game, as an overall gaming experience, I feel like you can just sink more time into Breath of the Wild. There's so much time you can spend exploring Breath of the Wild and whatnot. I just feel like that once again gets a point for replay value. Now, story isn't huge in either of these games. I mean, there's a story, but well, let's go into Mario Odyssey first. Spoiler alert, Bowser kidnaps Peach. What's interesting is that as simple as the story is, there's still story set pieces that happen before and after every world and even events that happen within each kingdom, such as one major one in the Metro Kingdom that I'm not gonna spoil if you don't know what it is, because it's freaking amazing. And Breath of the Wild, on the other hand, I feel like there's a story there, and there's all these characters, and you hear about the stuff that happened before, before Zelda lost his memory. Yes, I, I'm, I'm keeping up with this, I'm stealing Wood's joke. It's a plot that kind of, you know, you hear it rumbling underneath neath the surface, but besides a few key points, particularly at the beginning, and at the end, I don't really see much of it. And granted, maybe that's because I feel I spent so much time in Breath of the Wild just going out and exploring and whatnot, but even compared to Odyssey, which is a Mario game, I just felt like the story was less prevalent. Or at the very least, you know, there are less cutscenes and whatnot to really, you know, draw on your focus and really show off some cool or funny visual jokes or whatever. As shocking as this may be, I'm awarding a point to story, a point of story, excuse me, to Super Mario Odyssey. So there you go, Mario Odyssey is the better game. What do you do? Both of these games are fantastic though. While I'm awarding this game more points on this little arbitrary system I've just come up with because y'all have asked me to compare these two games, I still think that both are worth your time. Both are worth checking out. I mean, come on, even if I gave Mario a point for being exclusive because I love that exclusivity, Breath of the Wild's still Nintendo exclusive. Both of these are wonderful games. Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, they're worth your money. But that's just my opinion. But you know what? Leave your opinions on this matter down in the comment section below. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe to Stuff We Play for more great content like this. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Stay classy, and I will see you next time.